hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> Out there. How are we doing? Big Bulk here, the voice of our core boxing. Now, shots have been fired by Mr. Hartman Strikes Back. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play you something. We haven't got the video uh, pointed at the screen. I will just knock it over there because Hartman's probably the type of guy to report me for copyright. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to play you the video and I want you to listen to this. Tell me what you think, it's about Kel Brook and it's about the situation why Kel Brook's career, in my opinion, were ruined by Eddie Hearn. Now, we're talking about a fighter here who was undefeated, welterweight world champion. Uh, undefeated welterweight world champion. He'd had a few soft defences and he had a fight lined up, a unification fight with Jesse Vargas. Now, a unification is picking up another belt, so you're building yourself up to be the best in your era in that weight division. And I always said that Kel Brook is the best uh, welterweight in world boxing and I'll always, I'll always stick by that. Now. We know we fought Triple G, don't we? So you're looking at a kid that's gone 147 past 154 and to 160. And Golovkin's a big 160. Now, they got into Kel Brook's head telling him, you're a beast. You'll be bigger than Golovkin on the night. Not true. Not true at all. We all know what happens, don't we? Once you've rehydrated over 36 hours. Golovkin were probably 175 pound in that ring on the night. Kel Brook might have been 175 on the night, but his body is only a 160, and he's only going to walk around near his fight weight at 160, 165. He's still going to be a smaller man on the night, so I never bought into that Kel Brook's the beast. I bought into that Eddie Hearn had the O2 Arena in London, in Greenwich, on hire, and that's hundreds of thousands of pounds. Christopher Eubank Jr. thought that he could have Eddie Hearn over a barrel and say, Eddie, I want more money. That's what they wanted. They didn't sign for the fight because they were unhappy with the money. Eubank stand wanted everything. He asked for everything as well. And they were pouring his lad, Christopher Eubank Jr., at the time, in a fight that really they weren't ready for. And they knew that, but they got the profile off it, didn't they? They pulled out of the fight, where does that leave Eddie Hearn? It leaves him with a big a big problem. Enter Kel Brook. Now, Hartman Strikes Back is Eddie Hearn's mouthpiece. The reason I know this is because he's always giving out Eddie Hearn exclusives. He's always telling you what's going on. A bit similar to what I do with Eddie Hobson. Now, Listen to this, tell me, and, and tell me what you think. He went over to America and beat Chuck Kota. He then defended his belt against a series of disappointed opponents, the likes of Jojo Dan, Kevin Bizier, Frankie Gavin, etc. And when he saw his rival, Amir Khan, taking on Canelo Alvarez, Kel Brook felt a certain way about that. And he told Eddie Hearn, get me the Golovkin fight. Now, some time passed, and Eddie Hearn finally managed to get Kel Brook, the type of fight he'd been waiting for, a unification against Jesse Vargas, who was the WBO welterweight champion. But instead of going through with the Jesse Vargas unification, a chance to fight Golovkin popped up, because the negotiations between Golovkin and Eubank Jr. came to a halt, and therefore Eddie Hearn turned around to Brook and said, well, you know how you said you'd like to fight Golovkin? Right, let me just stop that there. You heard Hartman say, Kel, you know how you said you'd always like to fight Golovkin? Not true. Not true at all. What happened were, they were all in a, a restaurant and Eddie Hearn said, yeah, Canelo, Khan, blah de blah this and that, and whatever, and they were talking about 
fighters in general now, if you ask Kel Bro if he'd fight Anthony Joshua, he'd say yeah. If you asked him if he'd fight Muhammad Ali, he'd say yeah. If you asked him if he'd fight a man in the street or a doorman, he'd say yeah. Fighters always say they will fight somebody. They never, ever, ever say they're not gonna. I once was at a show, a, a Mick Whale show in Mexborough, and I asked Anthony Tomlinson if he'd fight Darren Tetley on a Dennis Hobson show, and he said, okay, I'll fight anybody. And that's how fighters are. They say they'll fight anybody. Josh Whale, he'd fight Tyson Fury, he'd fight anybody, Triple G. Now, Eddie Hearn put Kell Brook in a difficult position there. Now, how it was sold to him, and I know this for a fact because Dennis and Asif Valley was on that picture there with me. Dennis and Asif were in talks with Amir Khan to put on Brooke versus Khan. I saw all emails, saw all offers. I'm not bragging, I've seen it all. And I also know the true story about Kel Brook and Triple G. Yeah, Eddie um, did ring him up and asked him if he wanted the fight, but he never said, do you remember when you said you'd fight him? What Eddie Earn did, he had that plan B, and I'm blaming Eddie Earn. You shouldn't put a fighter in that situation where his team are questioning it. You're speaking to Kel Brook, do you want the fight? He's gone, yeah, Babby, I'll fight anybody, Babby. He's then gone back to his team, and they've gone, but well, Eddie Hearns give them a cushion, on it, an insurance policy. What he's given them is, well, if you get beat, you've always got your welterweight belt to fall back on. Yeah, but what happens in the meantime? He gets one eye socket smashed, the other one half smashed. Spence finished off that one in the next fight, so that ended up smashed. And then you've got a mentally messed up fighter, haven't you? Listen. I always go on about weight divisions, don't I? Do you know fighters, right? Do you know where we have weight divisions? We have weight divisions for a reason. Fighters are not superheroes. They're not. The fighters. You're not going to put Josh Whalen with somebody who's European level uh, heavyweight, are you? No. It's like me saying to Josh Whale, Josh, you're fighting at 126. Do you want to fight a light welterweight? Would I put... Josh Taylor in with Josh Whale. Could you imagine that? Or, let's back up a bit. Would Paulie Malignaggi fight Triple G? No. Would Manny Pacquiao fight Triple G? No. If we said to Manny Pacquiao, who fights a welterweight, Manny, will you fight Triple G? What do you think at the time Bob Aram would have said? And they said, are you nuts? Are you nuts? Would Floyd Mayweather fight Triple G? No. Manny Pacquiao, no. So why Kell Brook? Why Kell Brook? And why have we got Hatman strikes back, yet again, firing shots at Porky's Corner? He's not man enough to mention my name, but he's all aimed at me. Alright? So I'm just giving you a little bit of a heads up, hat man strikes back. If you want to come to Dennis Hobson's show, 21st of February, you're more than welcome to come as my guest on my table. Alright? And let's debate. Alright? So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Shout out South Yorkshire Packaging and Innovation Up Boys. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking.